and for the last talk of the day, the last talk show of the day, uh, it will be in English and of course as you notice it and it will be on common control and communication, what level of integration for civil response to major disasters. To speak uh, uh, about this subject uh, today, three guests with us uh, coming from the industry side. Uh, we miss a little bit about the uh, end users to, tonight, but, uh, but I think that they will uh, follow us on, on, the, on, the, on the internet and they can react on the uh, Twitter regarding uh, each, uh, talk show Millipol. So you will get the, the address uh, on, on the screen. So, uh, first uh, guest on my right, Mr. Jean-Paul Moron, with the um, director of Tech One Company, a uh, Swiss company, yes. is organizing uh, and, and delivering uh, software for command and control. Uh, on its right, uh, Mr. Manfred Butler from the company Way, which is working in the field of integration uh, of Crisis Room, mainly. We'll discuss that in more, more later. And on the other side, Mr. Sébastien Sabaté from Thales, with a very large integrator uh, and, and service uh, provider that, that everybody knows. So we are going to speak about this uh, integration of civil response to major disasters. So generally, when we speak about a major disaster, we speak of different size of command and control ranging from tactical to operation and from operation to strategic. Uh, how do you, do you feel this, uh, these different levels uh, and what are the, uh, the customers is asking you today uh, compare what they are, uh, were requiring a few, few years back? So maybe Jean-Paul you can give us a, a, a little bit trend of the, of the, of the needs of the users or from the side? Yes, what users on uh, services are asking now uh, the availability of data everywhere in part of the crisis on site and in the headquarters as well and in each intermediate level. So that means that we have to be open to any kind of uh, equipment because we cannot ask to someone to have a dedicated uh, hardware or software level to, uh, to use. So uh, the software must be very open to each kind of uh, hardware. Secondly, we also have to uh, have visibility rules. That means that at each level we have different needs. We have a very detailed needs in the, on the field and in the local headquarters, but we need to have something more aggregate at the highest level. Regarding uh, Thales, it's your, you're also uh, doing very large systems for, I think, uh, what is exhibited today in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Millipol, that the uh, Gendarmerie uh, mobile uh, common post outside and, and also uh, inside some, um, some projects in the uh, uh, headquarters that you, you have worked on. Could you tell us a little bit more about uh, what, what really the trend of the market today as well in France, as well as in the international market. In, in fact, um, following uh, what Jean-Paul uh, said, uh, we, we understand from the market that now all the end users uh, on the field want to share the information. They want to share everything. They want to share their, their GPS location. They want to share data. They want to share video from the field to the mobile command unit and then to the C4I. Uh, command control room. So everything should be shared. It's why the reason Thales uh, just come up with a new uh, solution, the, um, the MIDS, uh, which has been developed uh, uh, with our partner, uh, Renault Truck Defense, and we have integrated all our electronic, all our subsystems, C4I activity inside the vehicle in order to be as close as possible to the big event or to the large crisis uh, area. Alors, when we speak about a uh, large amount of data, because that's what you, you are saying, telling us, I mean, photography, video, GPS, location, information, that's been a, a, a very big of, uh, amount of data. Those two questions, when we speak about data, we speak about, of course, networks, communication networks, uh, and, and, and first point, and second point, display of those information, because many information needs many... <laughs> screen to display. So maybe, maybe a word, uh, Manfred, on, on what you, you do for uh, command and control systems where you want to uh, have a lot of information and how will you aggregate those information? Right. So in a control room, usually you have several desks, many desks, and what the need here is that at every desk, every source is available. 
Now what we see is due to these different systems, due to these different platforms, usually then the user has several keyboards on the desk. And that's not good in an ergonomic point of view. So what we deliver is a platform. On this platform, you can hook every system, Talis system, whatever the system is, Unix system, independent of the platform, hook it to the system and at the desk, you then have with one keyboard and one mouse, you can switch to these different systems in one keystroke. So that means in a crisis, when the operator is uh, under stress, he only has one device, one mouse, and he can switch by finger. Different software, yes. the different configuration you right. need. What is important then that we can monitor the sources I have on the desks, also on the video wall in any size, on different video walls, maybe located uh, in di different positions in the room. So that's the ergonomic we try to, to integrate, independent of the software that's driven uh, by the dif different applications. So regarding the, the, the screen wall, we, we have an inflation of screen wall more and more in the operation center, right. or do you think that it's, uh, it's more a, a question of ergonomy and, and, and display? How do you, I, I mean, in other words, it's HD, give us more flexibility not to get too much large uh, wall room or uh, right. video room or... I think. Uh, what is the trend? Right. I think important is the concept of what do you want to visualize because you have usually at the desk already monitors with content so maybe you want another content on the video wall content that's uh, helping everybody in the room because everybody can see it okay maybe also interaction with the different software products that when something comes up that then on the video wall you get this camera the correct camera in the correct position displayed with text so that everybody in the room can uh, benefit of the visualization. So visualization is, is, is a key, but as we said before, uh, data needs a network. So in Thales you provide also networks. What is the trends regarding the, uh, the, the networks? Because now we, we speak HD, we speak big data, we speak... So how do you, do you, do you organize the, the different networks, and especially on the, on the field? Because we have uh, the, the, all, all, all the issue of uh, bandwidth on the field. The, the, ta the challenge is to be able to um, aggregate uh, or to use multi-barrier systems, such as satellite communication from a C2 mobile to the command control room uh, or to the headquarter, or 4G technology, such as LTE technology, long-term evolution technology, or PMR, private mobile radio, using 400 megahertz uh, solution, Tetra or Tetrapol, whatever you want. But, 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 but on some, we are very on, on a narrow uh, bandwidth. Yes, but complementary, you can use 4G LTE which is high bandwidth and allowed uh, big data, in fact, a large uh, HD uh, video uh, application or uh, pictures applications. So due to the capacity of the network, you, you now can get more information. The, the, the second challenge is to be selected in the, in the information because uh, if you have too many information, you will kill the efficiency on the field. So you have to be select on this information. Uh, se select of the information mean, uh, uh, in, in a sense, uh, 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 good training of the operators and a good training on the, on the first responder or the responder on the scene. So, so it's, a, it's a big question o o about how to use uh, those systems at their best level. Yes, you, you, you mean training, yes, first, but you have to uh, provide the technology which will give the right information to the right person because you need a collaborative system and you need all the time to share the information. So the challenge, once again, is to give the right information to the right person. And because now we have access to a large network which allows big data, big uh, application, we are able to select the right information to the right person in order to get benefits in the efficiency. Well, it's, a, it's a system, the, the, this, uh, I would say, uh, selection of the information and the attribution of the information is, is, a, is, a, is a key part of the software development today yes, for co command and control? Of course, because we have to, um, to uh, deliver uh, all data to everyone who needs this data, but not more. That means we have not to uh, deliver data uh, which uh, are in a uh, matter of else to someone being a policeman because it's a secret, it's hidden, 
and so so we have to have a very good profile on roles and different level of uh, um, secret or of uh, confidentiality. confidentiality. Yes, this is the first thing. So then we also have the escalation. That means something starting from the field can go and be uh, escalated up to the, uh, the highest headquarter level. It is what we did for the French Gendarmerie, for instance, which start from the brigade, going to the company, going to the department, the region, and then on the national level. And uh, the, uh, the information is not really the same at, at each level. Uh, each level has his right to see and do. It's a project that you did together, yes. uh, the Gendarmerie. Yes, we are, we are talking about BDSP. Uh, it's a national database for public security. Yeah. Mm. Alors, this, this matter of, uh, of exchanging information uh, gives also the, the problem of uh, two problems that now in a large scale disaster you work with uh, many stakeholders. We speak about the police and health, but we can imagine ONG at the international level and many, many stakeholders, critical operator infrastructure, and so on and so on. So, how you can, uh, I would say, uh, um, uh, deal with, with, with this issue and, and with the uh, interoperability of systems, I would say, because often uh, we don't start from a white paper, there are something, uh, uh, system existing and so on, and the question of interoperability uh, uh, emerges uh, a lot of times. So maybe, uh, Thales, you can say a word on that. First, Sebastian. The, the capacity uh, should, should be on the um, how to um, get uh, in one time, in one place, the community of interest of this event. If you have a crisis uh, situation, you need ambulance, you need policemen, you need firemen, and everything, everybody has to talk to each other. So first is the capacity of the gateways between several systems. So the challenge will be how to integrate these gateways and how to make it working. Second is the different way how they work by their own. So you have to consolidate in one place to get the nice pictures, the, the, the right pictures at the right time. So you have to develop a system which is able to integrate all these different uh, issues, all these different uh, uh, targets, in fact. So the, what, what, what you, you tell us is finally that there are solutions for any, any problem of interoperability today, that it's just a question of, uh, of building a system. Integrate the system. Integrate the system. Uh, could, you, could you give us uh, some example where large uh, scale integration has been, has been done uh, in, in, in your customer's uh, portfolio, I would say, uh, uh, regarding a large crisis room that can operate, uh, uh, I would say, a large event situation? I think especially uh, to, to some uh, critical events like uh, um, uh, games, international, uh, uh, Olympic Games or, or World Cup or whatever okay. because it's, it's a big driver of, an, of, uh, okay. of such system. So. I see. Maybe I can give an example where actually three parties are in a room. That's in Holland, Rotterdam Raymond. It's a room with about 45 desks, uh, 200 uh, systems, police works in there, the fire and ambulance. Okay. And uh, the situation is there. How can I access in my role to the correct systems? Okay from the desk, okay? Not having three or four keyboards, not having the systems under the desk. All the systems are located in a system room. So when I log in, then the system knows, okay, this person has at this desk access to these systems. That's helping the process, okay? That's helping the process and supporting the collaboration. So that's an example uh, where we solved the integration uh, issue uh, without having to change the different systems from the different companies because we just grab uh, the standard interfaces from these systems from a PC, mouse, audio, video, uh, USB and bring these signals then to the different desks. So it's a good, uh, good integration process through the uh, different systems. More, more generally when we speak about the uh large-scale integration systems. Uh, we see that in the uh, US, for instance, the 911 is a very uh, global room with different, uh, as you mentioned, in, in Netherlands. Is the is there trend of the market to have big rooms, including everyone, or to stay with different uh, services and, and get a virtual uh, 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 network uh, and operating uh, uh, 
uh, operation systems? What, what, what are the, the so, trends? Uh, we recently built a crisis room in Switzerland and uh, it is more decentralized. So there is one headquarter and there are several levels, levels at each service and levels on inside each service going from the headquarter to mobile. And the challenge was that we had to uh, use this software on different equipment, being Windows or not, being on mobile Android or Apple and so. And uh, we had to have the same user interface on any kind of device. So it's more a virtual large global room, but it's no more mandatory to, uh, to call everybody to be on the same place. Yeah, because it's, a, it's a sometimes an issue from some services or some organization that don't want to, they want to share the information, but not the, yes. not the, uh, the space. Or and this system will way. be used next week for uh, an exercise of a crisis, a railway crisis between France and Swiss, and both countries will be involved in the exercise using this software. It's a, it's, a, it's a system which carry a, a, a how many posts? Uh, uh, about 300. About 300 posts. So w w what is the scale uh, mainly of, of, the, of the design of Crisis Room today? It's, uh, as we mentioned, 45 posts, 300, 200? It's, 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 it's really depend on the, the concept of operation of the customer. We have example with few uh, position and we have example with large exposition. The, the last example is the Mexico. Suida de Segurad, we have roughly 250 call taker positions uh, in a very large uh, command and control with uh, one main command and control and five regional command and control plus two C2 mobile. Uh, so it's really depend of the, 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 the concept of operation of the customer. So our technology can start very small with few positions and uh, increase to very, very large uh, network. The, the, the systems should be uh, similar. You don't have to change the technology from the small entry-level solution to a very large solution at the end. It's a question of capacity of the network. Yes. The, re regarding technology today, we, we are more on the, on the based on web technology, IP technology, than, than uh, no. dedicated technology. It's, it's, yes. it's, it's a general uh, trend. Uh, the trend, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so that uh, allows also much more interoperability than before. Yes. But um, the major issue is uh, to be uh, robust enough on the software side because ev as we are centralized, for instance, for a nationwide solution like French Gendarmerie, for instance, uh, being on all national uh, French territories in metropole and overseas, there are 6,000 um, workstations connected to one server pool. So uh, the reliability of the system must be very, very high. Otherwise, you have one country down. Yes, so, so the issue of uh, uh, cyber security, redundancy are, are become also key issue uh, on, on, on C2, C3 because uh, of course, uh, like all digital systems, uh, it, it could be sensitive to cyber. So uh, do, 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 do you do uh, cyber by design, I would say, as, uh, as we do privacy by design in some other application in, uh, in Thales? And, and is it a trend as well to include cyber security in all the systems? We, we have the capacity to introduce cyber in all the systems. After, it will be depend on the customer demand. Uh, some law enforcement activity doesn't need a high level secret or, or uh, just a NATO restriction is enough. Uh, mainly, we will protect the communication system, yes. the radio communication system or the, the microwave communication system. In the C4I, of course, we have different system to avoid any attack, uh, uh, or any threat, but uh, mainly uh, it's, it's made during the design and implementing during the project. Uh, I don't see um, any example which in the security needs, uh, public security needs a very high level secret of, 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 of cyber. Of cyber of, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. But when I was speaking, cyber, it's not only uh, the cipher side, but more the, uh, the the fact that you cannot be attacked and put the system down. Because as, as we mentioned, it's a it's a vital uh, security system for a country or for a region. So so you must be sure that the system is operating. So either by uh, redundancy, either by also intrasec. Yes, uh, redundancy. Uh, 
architecture, the network design, and, uh, and um, other components inside uh, the, the server, the database, everything that can secure the access uh, of the uh, information. Alors, regarding, uh, regarding this uh, disaster, we spoke about more regional, national. When it comes to international, and I think especially what's happened uh, in Philippines, uh, we see more and more major disasters asking for help uh, international communities. Many countries sending uh, on the scene some resources with a lot of difficulty of coordination. Uh, do you think that uh, there is a need for a, a global uh, uh, a system for international relief, international disaster relief? Is there something that uh, emerge or uh, people yes, ask or interoperability of different countries? How it, how it works in this field? Because yes. in Swiss you have a lot of international uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. organizations. That's true, but it must be, uh, it must be under the responsibility of an a United, uh, United Nations uh, organization, and then it could be something with a multi-level uh, crisis system. So uh, it's almost the same we did with French Gendarmerie with multi-level system being abroad. But, and but today there is no such requirement. No, there is. Uh, maybe there is a requirement, but it is not founded at least. Yeah. <laughs> it's a question of budget today. Of, of budget, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a good question. How, how much cost uh, uh, a system for uh, a national system? I don't know if the, if, the, if the cost of the gendarmerie system is public or not. It should be public, no? It, it, it is public. It is public. So it, it's uh, a uh, public tender. Uh, so so how, much, how much is the cost for, you say, 6,000 uh, users? users? So roughly, how, how much is the cost of a system like that in C4? It's, it's, uh, it's dependent it's, uh, roughly between 10 to 20 million euro. Yeah, okay. So, but uh, it's, a, it's a large scale <laughs> for public tenders. It's, it's, <laughs> it's even larger. It's even larger. It's more o o above that 20, yeah. 20, 20 million. But if we are talking so about Mexico, Ciudad yes. de Segura, it's uh, less than 300 million US dollar. Yeah, okay. So, you, so, so we, we have the scale of uh, national uh, systems with French from 20 to 300 million regarding it, what we really do. It's really depending the, 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 but in the Mexico, technology. You, yeah, in Mexico you, you, you have, have lots of video, video well. camera. You yeah. have more than 8,000 video camera. So but you have lo lots of equipment. Yeah. So it's not only the, the C3, C4, it's also all the uh, remote the different sensor that sensors that you are providing yeah. with yeah. the project. Yeah. Alors, my, my, my uh, baby, because time is going, maybe uh, my last question would be, how do you see the, the trend of the market in the, in the future? Uh, what, what do you think that will be the, the, the trend? More interoperability, more information, uh, uh, higher uh, bandwidth? Uh, so the trend is, I, it must be higher bandwidth because we need to have uh, uh, n not only photos, but also films on site video. and uh, video and uh, CCTV coming uh, back from the field to the headquarters and so, and it needs bandwidth. So the question is not really the software by itself, no. but it's more the network to support the information. You, network capacity. You, network capacity. You, you must have the network capacity to use your software. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and all the issue of compression is also a big uh, a big issue. Yes. Data compression. Of course, it, it it's following the capacity of the network and it's one of the solution to uh, avoid any congestions uh, the compression. But uh, in addition to that, we see that the market. Uh, needs more and more uh, C2 mobile to be closest to the event or to the crisis okay. area. Um, so it, it, it means also that you have to develop and to provide solution, communication system between your C4i uh, command and control room and your C2, your mobile C2. So uh, either if it's private communication system or public communication system operating by a private uh, solution, but you have to increase the bandwidth to allow all these different subsystems to be shared. So the by capacity the user. to use, in fact, private security networks, which are maybe less bandwidth, but and and to combine with commercial one that you could uh, pick up on, I would say. Definitely, it will be a combination between a private network and public network with, uh, um, I would say, reserved bandwidth okay. to the activities. So it's a, it's a big trend. On, on your side, what is, the, what is the big trend for a managing crisis room? You have more and more crisis room to install? or uh, uh, Because sure. we spoke about mostly public sectors, but also private uh, companies are doing more and more operation centers as well, yes. no? 
well, security is the big theme, isn't it? Now, uh, another topic is the crisis room needs, what do we do when the crisis room is in a crisis, okay? So that's why we need the network, that's not why we need uh, the flexibility to maybe, if this crisis room fails, that another room can take over, you know? And this is what the, the network is providing, and this is where we can help with our technology, that we can switch signals from one room to another. That's, and another trend, of course, is, or what is important is, uh, Put the user in control. The user needs very easy access to the different systems. Yeah, the, the problem of ergonomy and access right. and not to have uh, the burden to learn for uh, three weeks uh, the use of a software is uh, really a key point, I suppose. Yes, absolutely correct. And that, that also yeah. you, 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 you confirm. Yeah. That's, that's what the customer wants. Yes, easy. of course. Yeah, the customer wants to uh, receive and, uh, and transmit data from everywhere, any kind of data. Uh, film or data or maps or, and so on and uh, without any limit but the limit today is the network okay okay but easy way to to do it so the ergonomy is also a, a big point uh, a, for, key for point. Your, a key point for yeah. your for your customers okay uh, maybe we will uh, we will uh, end because we still have one or two minutes by uh, research uh, because you know we had uh, this afternoon two talks on horizon 2020 uh, do you do you uh, accept? Uh, do you do you see uh, uh, because there are big fundings coming on those kind of projects from the EU Commission and sometimes from uh, Swiss is eligible to the EU uh, uh, Commission funding. So so do you do you think that uh, you 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 will be in the framework of Horizon 2020 to develop your your solution for the future? I hope so, and uh, we uh, take advantage of any uh, possibility in the technological world world to, uh, to uh, develop our software and to use these new features. We're open for it and we're looking forward to it. Have, have you done it for not before? Yet, not yet, because you are small uh, SMEs yes. and uh, you know that SMEs will be one of the key points of, right. of the Horizon 2020, yeah. so maybe it will be some opportunities. We, we are very pleased with the uh, 2020 years coming between the, the FP7, which is now about to finish, to, to, to end, uh, because it's, uh, it will be um, more uh, real product uh, instead of uh, concept and research. So more closer to the yes, market. Yes, it's, it's a huge step and we're happy with that. Okay, thank you, thank you very much uh, uh, for, for this conversation uh, and uh, we, will, uh, we will see us together tomorrow morning, uh, this was the last talk of the day, and tomorrow morning we will start at 10.30 uh, regarding EOD and robotics, so uh, state of the art, so uh, uh, I will be glad to, to meet you tomorrow morning, the first talk will be in French, and at 10.30 on 11, and it will be later on, on the 11.30 on UAV, and it will be in English, this one. So I hope to meet you tomorrow morning, and uh, I wish you a, a good end of the At Millipol show. Thank you very much. <laughs>